Hi there, so this is uh, video number four, so this is the last one. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the detector uh, plugs into the oscilloscope, we'll look at some pulses, I'll show you how to troubleshoot the circuit. Um, uh, but first, before we get into that, uh, let me show you the measurement that we started on, uh, video number two. Um, so the detectors uh, plugged into this USB battery bank, uh, they were just sitting downstairs in the parking garage uh, on level 2P. Um, before that, uh, we had them up here. Uh, they were outside, um, just sitting by that window over there, uh, and we measured a rate of one point or zero point one five eight uh, hertz. Yeah. Uh, then I brought it downstairs. Uh, we left it down there for two hours and thirty four minutes. You can see on the bottom one. The bottom one's the slave detector, uh, and the count rate was uh, zero point one one uh, zero point one one six. Now it's zero point one one nine. Um, uh, when I first grabbed it from the basement, uh, it took me about two minutes to bring it up here. Um, so you can see this represents maybe a decrease of probably about 30%. So the rate seemed to decrease, the trigger rate on the slave detector seemed to decrease by about 30%, moving it from floor 5 up by the window uh, down to P2, um, the parking garage. So um, I also made this measurement at home a while ago. Uh, and I'd see a rate uh, when I'm not in a big building like this. Like we're on level five right now, but this actually goes up to level ten. Um, I saw a rate of zero point one seven ish. So uh, it, it looks like uh, from no overburden to where I'm at here, it looks maybe a decrease of ten percent. Then you go down into the basement, it looks like another decrease of about thirty percent. Okay, so that's the example measurement using uh, these new guys. Um, you know, we could have even saved. The count rate uh, it's an SD card if we wanted to plug in an SD card into the back you know and plotted the rate as a function of time or uh, these detectors actually measure the pulse amplitude as well which you'll see here on the oscilloscope too okay so uh, let's talk about the detector so here's the detector uh, that we built let me try and figure out how I can do this so you guys can see it a bit better okay so here's the detector that we built um, in video two and three um, I have it plugged into an oscilloscope um, uh, through the BNC cable at the back, or the BNC jack receptacle at the back. Okay, and it's just plugged into channel one. Um, the code that's uploaded here, uh, I have a threshold, software threshold set to 50. Um, that's 50 ADC counts. And uh, what that corresponds to, if you were to look at the, uh, the calibration um, in the instructions.pdf document, the, uh, the about 50 ADC counts corresponds to about 15 millivolts uh, in SIPM peak amplitude, and I can show you that here. Okay, so um, what we should see, uh, what we should see here is basically every time that the screen updates, right now I have a threshold set on the screen to, uh, there you go, it's 15.2 millivolts. So every time that the screen updates, hopefully you'd see a pulse, or it's close, I mean it's going to be plus or minus a couple millivolts, but uh, you should see an update, every time the screen updates you should see a pulse register here. Occasionally, the, the Arduino will be updating the screen and may miss a pulse, because it does take time. There is a dead time associated with the detector, which we do take into account. Um, but you can see it, it seems to correlate nicely with uh, the, the refresh rate on the uh, oscilloscope. Um, OK, so what we're looking at here is we're plugged into the BNC receptacle. This is connected to the anode of the SIPM. Uh, so this is the raw SIPM pulse. Um, let me show you some uh, other things we can look at. So if we look at the bottom of the detector here, on the side here, there's these three connections here. I don't know if you, yeah, you can see them. So these are the test point connections. It's test point one, two, and three. So test point one is connected. Uh, it's it's a pretty much the exact same signal as here, except it's after a 1K resistor. Uh, test point two is the amplified signal. So we amplify the signal by about a factor of 20, 20 to 25-ish. Um, and then uh, test point three is the peak detector circuit. So we can look at what's... Uh, the peak detector is doing, and uh, this is the this is what the Arduino is uh, actually measuring. So the Arduino measures on test point three. Okay, so uh, the way that we can look at this is let's just plug in a uh, um, uh, a scope probe, a one-time scope probe, uh, into uh, channel two, and let's turn it on. Um, we're going to start by looking at. You know, we're going to start by looking at. Uh, uh, the very first test point connection, which I said is after a 1K resistor, so it should be pretty much the same. So I'm going to set the scales here the same. The scales are 20 millivolts for both channels, 
and the time division here is 500 nanoseconds per division. Hopefully you can see the divisions on my laptop. Okay. Okay, so um, just hook up. There's a ground connection as well, so I'll hook it into the ground and grab the scope and throw it onto test point one. Okay, so what do you see here? You can see that it looks roughly like the same signal, same sort of amplitude, maybe some some of the higher frequency stuff is removed as when it goes through that uh, that, that uh, 1K resistor, but that's about it. It looks pretty pretty much the same pulse. So that's that's simple. That, that test point's not really testing anything. It's just if you don't have a BNC connector, you can use it to, to test the uh, SIP one. That's what it's for. Um, let's go to test point two. So this is the amplified signal. Okay. Let me zoom out. Um, I said it's about a factor of 25, right? So let's go down. So there's a fact, yeah, let's go down a bit more. So there's a factor of, oh, there's a factor of 25 exactly between um, the two scales now. And you can see that the amplified pulse looks relatively similar. Uh, again, you're missing some of those high frequency components. Uh, some of that is actually on purpose. So we have this capacitor that does some, uh, that sort of like limits the uh, frequency response of the, the op amp um, during the amplification process. Um, but you can see this is working well, so this is a good indication that the amplified circuit is working uh, as, it, as it should. Uh, we can move to the test point three, which is the peak detecting circuit. And what the peak detector does is it latches onto the peak of the amplified pulse and then takes forever to decay away. It takes uh, roughly one millisecond to decay away. So I said here the divisions are 500 nanoseconds. Um, if we were to look at how long this pulse is, which I'll do right now, uh, it'll be probably about zero, it'll probably be half a millisecond to a full millisecond. So zooming out in time. So every so I've gone by a factor of one thousand. So right now, um, every time division is five hundred microseconds, and you can see that the pulse is much much longer. And this is the way that the Arduino can measure uh, these pulses. The Arduino is unable to measure the SIPM pulse naturally because it's a uh, you know it's a it's in the uh, you know the pulse uh, width is is on the order of microseconds, and the the Arduino cannot see a microsecond. Um, the analog sampling um, that I have it set up for now can sample at about, it's on the order of about 8 microseconds. Uh, so what we do is we basically stretch this out in time, and the Arduino makes a bunch of measurements on this pulse. So let's just zoom in. So I said the Arduino measures about every 8, second, eight microseconds. So right now I have it set up to 5 microseconds per division. So you can imagine that what the Arduino is doing is it's triggering. It's seen, the, it's seen the amplitude of the pulse go above some design value. In our case, it's 50 um, ADC counts. Um, and then the Arduino samples basically every eight seconds, is able to sample every eight seconds. So what it does is it throws away the first pulse because the first pulse could have triggered somewhere on the, the, uh, the rising edge of this pulse. Uh, then it measures uh, for um, eight microseconds basically. And that's, that's the measurement that we, we take as the pulse amplitude. Um, you can go through the code and see what it does afterwards, but you can imagine that it's actually relatively important to take into account the timing of how you design your code because the Arduino is relatively slow. So, anyways, with this, uh, I can. Uh, I am confident that this detector is is uh, working well. Um, this is how you would go about troubleshooting uh, the circuit, at least. If let's say you started off, and you did not see pulses plugged in, you plug your BNC into the oscilloscope, and you don't see a pulse. Um, the easiest thing to do, may not for individuals, but for schools and stuff like that, um, is to just throw in another. Uh, scintillator plus SIPM combo, and that you know works, and then that'll verify either if your problem is with your scintillator or if your problem is with your, uh, sorry, scintillator SIPM combo, or is it if it's with the main PCB. Um, yeah, so I think that's I think that's about it that I need to show you. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, we put up this document. Uh, on the GitHub account called instructions.pdf. And so this goes through step by step, basically everything that I talked about uh, in the past four videos. I, I probably covered just about every all of, all of the document. Um, there's some more troubleshooting hints. Um, you could run into problems with uh, maybe code or, or something like that. And hopefully that document um, gives you the information you need. Um, otherwise, uh, feel free to email me with your questions. Um, this is still like an ongoing project, so there's always going to be uh, you know, ad advances as we release new versions of this detector. Um, but if you want to, um, what I would recommend is if you're building a detector, take the GitHub re repository that you're building it from, pull that onto your computer, and use that as a separate, um, 
uh, a separate location for that particular detector. Because what you'll find is there'll be other detectors that pop up on, on that GitHub page. Um, and hopefully this one will be up um, uh, very, very soon. Anyways, thanks for watching these videos. Talk to you later.